Akola. Akola. On this day in 1967, Emmanuel Ifeajuna, one of the coup plotters behind the failed January 15, 1966 coup, was sentenced to death by firing squad. Prior to this, he was an international high jump champion. He competed in the 1954 Commonwealth Games in Vancouver, then known as the Empire and Commonwealth Games, and was the first black man to win a gold medal in high jump, at just 19. We are in Empire Stadium attending the fifth and the greatest of the British Empire and Commonwealth Games. 652 athletes from 24 nations have gathered here. They stand in the red and white uniforms of Canada and Wales, the starched kava skirts of Fiji, the peacock blue turbans of India, the fez-like hats of Pakistan, as Field Marshal, the Right Honorable Earl Alexander of Tunis says, Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my privilege and pleasant duty to declare that the fifth British Empire and Commonwealth Games is officially open. Scaling the 6 feet and 8 inches pole earned him the nickname Ima Vancouver and was an enormous source of pride for Nigeria. Namdi Azikiwe's newspaper at the time, the West African Pilots, carried the story with the headline, Nigeria Creates World Sensation, and he was given a hero's welcome when he returned to Nigeria. The image of him scaling the pole was published on the cover of school notebooks across the country. After his success, he decided to leave sports to focus on school, so he enrolled at the University of Ibado, where he studied chemistry and became involved in student politics. He also became friends with the famous poets Christopher Okibo and J.P. Clark. He graduated in 1958 and taught for a while, but he found teaching boring and joined the army. According to police reports, Ifea Juna shot Nigeria's first Prime Minister, Tafawa Balewa, alongside six others during the 1966 coup attempt. When it failed and Agu Yuwanti became head of state, he fled to Dahomey, which is present-day Benin Republic, and later on, Ghana, disguised as a woman. However, his asylum expired in 1967 when Kwame Nkrumah's government was overthrown. He returned to Nigeria and was detained in prison in Rio, but was freed when Biafra seceded. He subsequently joined the Biafran army, and Ojuku promised no harm would come to him. Ifea Juna knew Biafra was devastatingly overpowered by the Nigerian government. He and a few other members of the Biafran army tried to negotiate a peaceful surrender with Nigeria through Britain. When Ojuku found out, he accused them of treason and sentenced them to death by firing squad after a hastily conducted trial. His last words are rumored to have been, You may kill me now, but I am afraid it is too late. I am sorry for you all because it won't be long before they get all of you. The Nigerians are already in your midst. Never. You hear me? Never. Things will not work the way you and your January 15 boys want them. Two hours later, at 4 p.m., Nigerian soldiers invaded Enugu. 